Hey, what's up there? How you doing? It's your friend Phil here, Project Management Trainer and Coach. I hope you're doing great. This is our third lesson in 40 days to PMP and CAPM exam success on PMP exam drive time. So welcome to today's program. Today we're going to continue our journey in risk management by talking about the third process in risk management, which is called which is called, <laughs> do you know what it's called? It's called perform qualitative risk analysis. Now in the previous course, the previous lesson, we went through what the identify risks process is. Now after you have identified all your risks, the next step is to begin to analyze those risks, be they positive or negative. And by analyze, I mean trying to get a qualitative measure of how severe these risks are in terms of their impact and how probable these risks are in terms of their likelihood. How likely is it that this risk would happen? And we don't use absolutes to do qualitative risk analysis. We don't use absolute percentages. We don't use dollars. We don't use resource hours, we use numbers, or we use scales like high, medium, low, or one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, stuff like that. And that's why it's qualitative. You can actually look at it as a little bit subjective. It's rather subjective. Now, there's a difference between this and another way of analyzing risks, which is quantitative. This is qualitative. Think of it as a more rapid means of you ranking these risks, you know, assessing the risks in order to rank them, and you also, in this process, want to categorize them. So, I would like you to read this up in the PMBOK guide. Go to that page where we talk about qualitative risk analysis, which is going to be the section 11.3. Read that up, understand all the terms. There's a very fine line that divides qualitative from quantitative. And a lot of people get them mixed up because qualitative could have numbers, scales, one to five, one to 10, and so on. But I don't want you to get confused. So I want you to really read it up. Get that highlighter, get that marker and read up that section. That's all I'm asking for you to do today. One process. Remember, it's a 40-day journey. We don't want to go overboard, you know. Questions from qualitative on some tests could be five, six, seven. And the reason is there are so many things to test in qualitative risk analysis. First of all, if I was an examiner, I would want to test you on what exactly is qualitative risk analysis. What's the difference between that and identifying risks or quantitatively analyzing risks or even detecting the response to use. You see, risk management is, is so compartmentalized in the PMBOK guide, but a lot of people miss that. It's compartmentalized into the processes and they are discrete. So if the PMI on the exam are asking you a question about qualitative, you should be thinking qualitative. You should not be blurring the lines with identifying risks, quantitatively analyzing risks, or performing or um, planning risk responses. No, no, no. You, you want to know those fine lines, okay? So there's a line between quantitative, which has to do with numbers and resource hours um, and currency values, versus qualitative, which has numbers, but does not have anything to do with these more quantitative measures, these more absolute measures, okay? And then when it comes to what else you do in qualitative risk analysis, you are categorizing these risks. For that reason, you should already have thought about a risk breakdown structure. Now, I'm not saying that you create the risk breakdown structure here. I'm saying that you should already have had your RBS from the plan risk management process. You see, 
fine lines dividing everything. Stuff that you get in plan risk management, you end up using in perform qualitative risk analysis. Things that you use in uh, perform qualitative risk analysis um, were not created in perform qualitative risk analysis, like your probability and impact matrix. Do you know a lot of people mix up the probability and impact matrix? They, they, they kind of think, oh, it's, it has numbers, so I use it in quantitative. Big mistake. So it's very important to distinguish between all of these processes. They have a lot of similarities, they have common inputs, but what you do in the process is different. So you need to categorize the risks, see? Then you need to rank the risks. How do you rank the risks? You get your risk score, probability rating times impact rating. You wanna get that risk score, that's your risk score. Um, in some firms, they call it something else, but probability rating on whatever scale you're using, one to five, one to 10, times impact rating is gonna give you a risk score, okay? And then you use the risk score to rank the risks. This is not quantitative, okay? So read up the information. Again, check the, the link below. Um, I have these open-ended questions that you can get and you can use these to further understand the processes of risk management and the different chapters that we're gonna be exploring, okay? I wish you all the best in your prep, and I'll see you again tomorrow on another episode of 40 Days to PMP and CAPM Exam Success.